Good evening. Good evening. It's time for the celebration once again. It's time for a celebration once again. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Embrace Hope International. Address at 5613 Rockfish Road in the greater town of Hope Mills. You know, down by the Hope Mills Lake. We chilled in the springtime, summertime. But listen, I want you to I want to invite you to come on down to service and just sup with us and just hang out with us and just listen to how the Lord began to move in that atmosphere and begin to instruct us and equip us in the mighty name of Jesus. First of all, first and foremost, uh, some of you I probably haven't seen, and so I want to say it up front, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year to you. Yeah, Happy New Year to you. It's going to be a prosperous year. The Lord said he was going to restore power during this year. It's going to be a year of restoration of power as we begin to move forward and receive what God has in store for us. Ah, it's just a blessing. Thanks, we're here in 2023, and let the Lord do what I know he's able, uh, able to do, and that's to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all, that we may ask or think according to the power working in us. So thank you, Lord, for who you are, for what you're about to do, and we just give him praise today, Lord. Praise and night, praise, praise, praise. You know, I like the one where it says in Psalms 150, uh, praise him in the sanctuary. Let everyone that has breath praise ye the Lord. And so that's what I want I want to encourage you tonight to just praise the Lord. Just praise him, praise him, praise him. Just walk through the house every time you get an opportunity. To praise the Lord. Why? Because he woke you up this morning. Why? Because he spared you and he brought you into another year. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we're waiting on your birthday. Oh, yeah. What a glorious time. What a glorious time. All right. All right. Listen, I want you to turn in the book of Habakkuk. Uh-oh. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk. We're going to talk about Habakkuk. Uh, I want to, you know, move in this direction tonight because normally at the first of the year, you know, people say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make this happen and I'm going to make that happen. And so I want to talk about reaching your goals. And tonight I want to talk to you if I had to give you a title tonight, it would be confidence to meeting your goal, confidence to meeting my goal. That's what we're going to talk about. Confidence in meeting my goal. I want to give you some background on it. I want to give you some scripture on it. I want to give you some foundation on it so that when you make this New Year's promise that you won't break it because you're going to stand on the word of God. You're going to stand on the power of God. And most certainly you're going to stand on the unbreakable foundation of God. Go with me and pray if you would, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are, for what you're about to do. Thank you that your mercy endured forever. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us, God. God, this is the day you've made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for the power. Thank you for who you are and for what you've done. Continue to bless us, God. Continue to keep us covered under your blood. This do now, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm just happy to talk about goals. I have so many goals this year that I have to meet. That if the Lord allow me to see 2024, all these goals that I have planned, I want to be able to say, check the block. I did that and check the box. I did this and I checked the box and I did this. So we're in the book of Habakkuk. What greater scripture, what greater book to begin to go to and talk about goals as God begin to plan out. What we have, we know he said in Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the plans that I have for you. And so since we know that God knows the plans that he has for us, then we are to move in a direction to please God with that plan. We are to move in a direction to please God with that plan. In so doing, I want you to go to the book of Habakkuk. And when you get to the book of Habakkuk, go to the second chapter of the book of Habakkuk. We, we're going to try to go uh, from verses 1 through verses 4 in the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk was a minor prophet. The Lord just used him for a time. He used him for a season to begin to equip his people, to begin to acknowledge his people in the thought process and begin to acknowledge the people in their anointing, in their gifts. But God has placed a purpose in us and God has placed, he has placed diligence in us and he has placed perseverance in us. 
And so he used Habakkuk to begin to say, this is how I want to, you know, encourage my people. This is how I want to make sure that my people understand how to flow with this gift that they, they have and how to flow to reach every goal, every, every, every goal that they're going to go through. They're going to reach that goal. And they're going to meet that goal. But I want you to understand there's some stipulations that you have to go through in order to reach that goal. There's some things that you're going to have to place in your mind in order to reach that goal. There's some things that you're going to have to do this season, this year, in order to reach that goal. And so, if I had to give you a title tonight, it's confidence uh, to meet my goal. There's a confidence you must have. Now, I know, I know, okay, I know, I know. I know you say, you know what? I said I was going to stop this. I said I was going to continue to do this. I said, I said, I said. You said it, but when you said it, you kind of meant it, but at the same time, there was some there was some thought process, well, maybe, you know, I do it for a season. And that season could be a month, that season could be two months, or that season could be three days. Either way, you said you tried it. But nevertheless, I want you to understand that here in the book of Mark, chapter 2, he says, I will stand my watch and set myself on a rampart, watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I'm reproved. So here we have Habakkuk, he was dreaming, and the Lord began to tell him to write this down and let my people understand what I want them to understand as about their goals. So we know that Psalms 84 and verse 7 tells us, oh, get your book, get your notebook, get your pen and your paper, because pastor coming with some scripture tonight, because I need for you to be able to stand on a foundation. I need for you to be able to go back and, and go through this thing that this goal that you set when it looked like it's just not going to happen. I want you to go back and say, well, pastor said this, and pastor said it based on the word of God, not my opinion, but based on the word of God. So I want you to be able to write this thing down now. Watch this. Uh, Psalms 84 and verse 7 says, The Lord has placed in your heart and mind, he said, they shall go from strength to strength. Every one of them appears before the God in Zion. So we are going to go from strength to strength. As you begin to plot this goal, as you begin to set this goal, as you begin to reach for this goal, you have to understand that you're going to go from strength to strength to strength. So it says Psalms 84 and verse 7. There's a strength in you that when you said you was going to do this, you was emphasizing the strength in you. And you're going to begin to go from strength to strength. You're going to begin to go from a strong mindset to a stronger mindset to actually reaching your goal. So Psalm 68 and verse 19 tells us, Blessed be the, the Lord who loads us daily with benefits. The God of our salvation. And, and Jesus is the Lord of our salvation. He loads us daily with benefits. And so he's going to load you daily with benefits. And then he comes back and say, you're going to go from strength to strength. That coincides one with the other. As God uh, gives you a benefit and then that strength is along with that benefit, Oh, man, you are moving in a direction to reach that goal. And when you begin to reach that goal, there's some things in you that has to be recited by you, that has to be thought about by you. Hey, listen to this. I was reading this, this particular passage of Scripture, and it began to bless me even more. So Proverbs uh, chapter 18, verses 20 says, A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his lips and from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Say it again, Pastor. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth and from the produce of his lips. He shall be filled. So the goals that, oh, I got to sit up in the front of my chair now. Yeah, we're about to talk about this thing. For the goals that you're trying to set, the Lord says that it shall be satisfied from the fruit of your lips, from the fruit of your mouth. So if there's a goal that you're trying to reach, there's a goal that you're trying to make manifest, you got to begin to speak that thing. Uh-oh. You got to begin to speak the satisfaction of it. You got to begin to speak the approval of it. And you got to begin to speak the satisfaction of it. We know in the book of James, he says, out of your mouth shall speak blessings and curses. So in this particular passage of scripture, he says, a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his lips. So as you begin to talk about whatever your goal is, whatever your business is, you are actually 
placing in a blessing. You're actually uh, uh, strengthening yourself to get to that goal. And as you begin to strengthen yourself to get to that goal, he said, from the produce of your lip. So watch this. The produce of your lips is you using your marketing side. Uh-oh. The produce of your lips is you using your marketing side, whether it be through technology, whether it be through just writing, whether it be going through your cell phone looking up stuff, whether it be you using Google to try to, you know, coincide with how to get to this. He says, from the fruit of your lips, he shall be filled. So as you begin to talk about your situation, you begin to speak life into this goal. You begin to make things happen. He says in Proverbs 18 and verse 21, he says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and he who loves it will eat his fruit. Say it again, Pastor. Say it again. Proverbs 18, 21 tells us that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. That simply means that when you begin to talk about your goal, and when you begin to, to, to put the goal in your thought process, you begin to use your marketing, you begin to use your Google, your cell phone, whatever it is that you're going to use, your laptop. And begin to talk about that thing and begin to go from strength to strength and begin to go from the different benefits that God is going to give you daily. My brothers and my sisters, you have to become successful because you are moving in a direction that's pleased by God. You're moving in a direction that's going to be pleased by God. So now, woo, as you move in a direction and this direction has been pleased by God, God is going to begin to strengthen you more. He's going to strengthen you like never before. Because when you begin to speak the word of God over your situation, over your goal, and you're planning, and he says, I'm going to, I'm going to download a, a benefit into you daily, and then he says, you're going to go from strength to strength. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I want to read this to you. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 17 tells us, this is Jesus talking to us. This is God talking to us. He was using Proverbs. He says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. So as you begin to move to accomplish this goal, you're going to begin to move diligently to find God. And to God says, when you find me, riches and honors are with me. Enduring riches and righteousness. Enduring riches simply means residual income. Simply means that you have created a path that's going to continuously bring in residual income. Then he says rituals and righteousness. So it's going to be residual income from a righteous standpoint. You don't have to go out there and steal nothing, scam nobody, try to sell this that you ain't got no business selling. He said, I'm going to bring it to you residual. And then in the midst of the path of justice. Okay, residual income. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the ways of the righteous in the midst of the path of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasures. Now, I just read that from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 17 through 21. God says, I love those who love me, and those who diligently seek me shall find me. So when you begin to speak life into your situation, when you begin to speak the goal, you say, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to make it happen. When you set that, you set it from a strength standpoint in your beings. You set it from a strength standpoint in your beings, in your heart, in your mind. You meant that thing. So God says you shall go from strength to strength. So with that strength that you started with, you're going to link it up with the strength that you're going to continue to flow because God says, those that love me shall find me, and when you find me, you shall find enduring riches and wealth. So as you begin to go from one string, God bless you there. You're going to get excited. You go to the next string, he's going to bless you there. You're going to get excited. Why? Because he says, I love those. And then he said, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth. So God is going to help you, us, me and you, to inherit wealth from the goal that you're setting. Praise the name of God from the goal that you're setting. So watch this now. I want you to I want you to fully understand this. I'm back in Habakkuk. Habakkuk tells us, write the vision and make it plain on tablet. 
So now, not only do he want you to, to uh, think about it, but he wants you to write it down. See, because when you write it down, you can begin to see how to, how to flow, how to make this thing become manifest. See, just in your mind, it's just a thought, but, and it's just imagination. But when you begin to put this thing on paper, now you can see how to come up with a business plan. Now you can see how to market this thing. Now you can see how to get it out and how to get it live, how to put uh, put put uh, uh, wings underneath it, how to put wind. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. How to put wind underneath it and cause that thing to become sailing, become sailing through the atmosphere because of your spoken word. And when you begin to speak that thing, he says, write the vision and make it plain on a tablet. So make it plain on some paper. Or make it plain on your laptop. Make it plain on your cell phone. Make it plain so that you can begin to, to go from it. That he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. You see that part? That God says that when you write it down, the vision, it, 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 it shall be for an appointed time. So this goal that you're making is just for an appointed time, as you may think. But as you begin to go towards this goal, this goal is going to create a residual income that's going to get to your home. And it's going to begin to stay in your home as you begin to be blessed by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, in the book of Psalms, chapter 32, verse 8, Jesus said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. He says, uh, Psalms chapter 32, verses 8, the Lord says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And I will guide you with my eyes. Way God Almighty. So Jesus, our Lord and Savior Christ says, I am going to instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And I will guide you with my eyes. So our Lord and Savior is saying that when you write down the vision and you make it plain on a tablet, that he who runs with it for the vision is yet for the appointed time, he said, I am going to instruct you. I'm going to lead you and I'm going to guide you. And he said, I'm going to do that with my eyes. According to uh, Psalms 32 and verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. So that's how God saying, I'm going to instruct you. And so as you begin to flow, as you begin to go, as you begin to set these goals, you have to know that what I'm telling you tonight, I want you to stand on it. Because it says in Mark 9 and 23, Jesus said, if you can just believe, all things are possible to him that believe. So now, I want you to begin when you're making these goals. I'm going to make a New Year's resolution. I don't never make those things. But I want you to do this. I want you to make a goal that you can obtain. There's three types of goals. There's three types of goals. There's a short-term goal, a medium-term goal, and a long-term goal. Short, medium, long. A short-term goal is one to 10 days. In between that one and 10 days, you're going to set a short-term goal that you're going to reach. It's going to have some oomph with it, but you're going to have to put yourself together and begin to, to move in a direction of success. You're going to make it work. So a short-term goal is between one day and 10 days. When you get past uh, the 10th day, your medium-term goal is from 10 days to 30 days. From 10 days to 30 days. So you have a short-term goal, a medium-term goal, and you have a long-term goal. And that long-term goal, it makes it's, it's more than 30 days. You got a long term. So whatever it is, you might want a year, two years, five years, whatever. That's your long term goal. But my focus tonight, my brothers and my sisters, is to get you past that short term and that medium term. Because when you get past that medium term, you're already in your faith walk to encourage yourself to get to the long term. Short term will help you keep uh, building your faith. That's what short term goals are. You go from strength to threat, so said the Lord. 
Well, short-term goals is there to help you build your faith. Once you make that first goal, you're elated, you're happy you did it. Man, I stopped smoking for 10 days. What you say? Man, I stopped doing this for 10 days. What you say? Man, I stopped eating all that stuff for 10 days. Man, I fast for 10 days. You see, there's so many goals that you can set. There's so, man, I'm not going to watch that TV show for 10 days. You're going to put that short-term goal in there. And that short-term goal will cause you to have more confidence in yourself. Hebrews 10 and 35 says, Lose not your confidence in me, which brings great reward and recompense. So don't lose your confidence as you begin to move, as you begin to flow, as you begin to allow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to help you move, to help you get to where he's trying to take you to in the mighty name of Jesus. So now, Proverbs uh, chapter 16 and verse 3 tells us, Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts shall be established. Proverbs 16 and verse 3 tells us, Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts shall be established. So as you begin to work, as you begin to work towards obtaining this goal, as you begin to work towards obtaining this goal, you're going to commit your thoughts, commit your works to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because remember now, he says he's going to instruct us. He's going to lead us with his eyes. So you don't have to worry about how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to make that happen. You don't have to worry about it. What you have to worry about doing is write down the vision, make it plain. And he says it's going to be for a appointed time. And then watch, watch what verse 3 says. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. So write down the vision and make it plain, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Why can it not lie? Because you persevere. You persevere through the hard time. You persevere through what looks like it just wasn't working. You persevere through, oh, man, I can't do this this time. You persevere. Man, I said I was going to stop smoking for 10 days and See, like everywhere I go, I smell cigarette smoke. See, like everything I do, I got that taste in my mouth. Oh, Lord, I can't stop. I, I, I. No, you can. You can. You can. Set a short-term goal. And then come back and set a, a medium-term goal. And then you want to focus on the long-term later on. But you want to first meet that short-term. And you want to meet that short-term with confidence. So write down your vision and make it plain, write it plain, make it plain, and write it down on a tablet so he who reads it, he can actually run with it. For the vision is yet for a point in time. So what am I saying to you? God says that I have put a plan in you. I have put a plan to prosper you. I have put a plan to, to make you happy, a plan to give you hope in a future and prosperity in that future. But saints, if you do not do anything about moving in the direction of bringing that plan, that goal to fruition, it's for an appointed time. It's going to walk away from you. Why will it walk away? Because we come up with all type of excuses why we could not make it work. Man, I didn't have, have the money for it. Man, I just don't have the time. Man, I just don't know what to do. All type of excuses we make, excuses we make not to reach that goal. And all that excuse is doing is satisfying our fatigue, is satisfying our lackadaisical attitude, is satisfying the laziness and the procrastination that's of the spirit of laziness and the spirit of procrastination that's trying to come over you and take over you. It's trying to come over you and take over you because the spirit of laziness and procrastination knows that if I can keep you tired, if I can keep you frustrated, if I can keep you not wanting to meet that goal, you're not going to increase your strength. You're not going to increase your faith. You're going to be just like you were a year ago, two years ago. You're not going to progress because you don't feel like you can. And so guess what? You've lost the battle. So that's why the Bible says it's just for an appointed time. And so at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Because once you reach that goal, it's going to speak to you saying, well done, you did good. Now go for the next one. 
Well done, you did good. Now go for the next one. Why? Because you keep making short-term goals and you keep prospering. And when you got to the point where that short-term goal you've made, you've conquered, make another one. You've conquered it. Make another one. You've conquered it. Make another one. You've conquered it. And then now go for that medium-term goal. Go for that medium career. Why? Because you got the zeal now. You got, I got the power. <laughs> no, I didn't go there. I didn't go there. You got the power to move. You got the power to work it out. You got the power to do what needs to be done to reach that mid, that middle uh, medium turn goal. Yeah, you can do it. Yes, you can do it. But watch this. Watch this. Watch this. This is where when they make that New Year's promise, I'm going to do it. It says, though it tarry, wait for it. Though it tarries, wait for it. Though it tarries, wait for it. So it looked like it's dragging its feet. Looked like you're never going to reach that goal. Looked like things just not going to work out for you. Though it tarries, wait for it. So the Bible is telling you and I that though it looks like it's maybe a far distance from you, but you stay on the road of recovering. You stay on the road of getting there. You stay and keep your head up. Be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord that you're going to reach this goal. You're going to make it happen. It's just not something that you've done in the new year. You meant that thing because something about you in your spirit, in your inner spirit, is telling you to meet this goal. It will be better for your life. To meet this goal that you set, it will be better for your health better for your mind, better for your home, better for your family. See, there's betterment in you meeting that goal. There's a whole lot of betterment in you meeting that goal. But Satan doesn't want you to experience betterment. So though it tarries, wait for it. The Lord is telling you and I, sometimes it's just, you know, it's going to be a little hard. Weather may be, you know, happening to you that stop what you're trying to do. It could be, you know, things coming against you, trying to stop what you're going to do, but you never quit. You never cave in. You never give up and watch God move on your behalf. He said, because it will surely come. He says, so though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to understand, now is not the time to cave in and quit, because God placed that, that anointing in you. He placed that drive in you. He placed that strength in you. He placed what that reality in you that you can be better. You can have better. You can do better, and sometimes it's going to take a grind. Sometimes fatigue is going to kick in. You take your nap, get back up, get back on the grind. Sometimes fatigue is going to kick in. You go to sleep for the night, get back on the grind early in the morning. Why? Because it's going to take, sometimes it's going to take a pressing, my brother. It's going to take a pressing, my sister. And see, this is what I love about God. The thing that you're trying to be, to make a goal in, you're trying to make happen, when you start doing your homework, when you start doing your research, you're going to find other people that has already reached that goal, and you're going to find people that's trying to reach that same goal. You're not going to be in it by yourself. God is going to reveal people to you that have met that goal. He's going to bring people in your path that's trying to reach that goal. Now you can collaborate to you and that person, or you and those people, or you and that group. Y'all can come together and talk about, man, I want to do this. I got to see how to do this. I want to make this thing work. I want to make it happen. But the thing is, you can't cave in and quit because the pressure of it will cause you to want to quit because Satan wants you to think that you really don't have what it takes to reach this goal. Whether it be short-term, medium-term, or long-term, who are you to think that you can be possible enough and, and prosperous enough to reach this goal? The devil is a liar. God placed that goal in your heart. He says, I placed that goal in your heart that you may uh, receive an inheritance. And I want you to receive that heritage. For those that love me, he says, I will bring them enduring riches. Enduring riches and wealth shall be with me when I come. He says, I love those that love me. So we love the Lord. He heard our cry. But he said, though it tarry, wait on it. Because it will surely come. And it will not tarry. It will not tarry. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him. But the just shall live by faith. Well, we might as well go on and highlight it. We're going to highlight it in your Bible. 
Go and highlight it because that sentence right there is what's going to make you reach your goal. That sentence right there is what's going to make you reach your goal. Habakkuk uh, chapter 2 and verse 4 says, But the just shall live by faith. So you got to have faith that if you said it, you can do it. If you thought about it, you can make it happen. If you're worried about it, don't worry about it. Pray about it, and God will work it out for you. So 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 tells us, For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Say it again, Pastor. I need, I need another leg to stand on. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 tells us, for all the promises of God in him are yes and amen to the glory of God through us. So these promises that we have, that we have read, read through the Bible, the, the scriptures that I just told you, and I just followed up with the gesture, live by faith. All of these are promises that God has made for us. And he said all the promises in God are yes and amen. And so to the glory of God. So we got to know that God is going to bless us. God is going to work it out. God is going to do the things that he said he was going to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we may ask or think. According to the power already working in us. I might give God the praise. Why? Because one thing we know about God. If he said it, it has to come to pass. Because he said in Hebrews 6 and 18, he swore on two immutable things. He can't lie. So if he can't lie, he said, I'll bless you. I'll work it out. I'll give you a heart desire. Whatever you ask him, pray and believe it. You shall receive it. I just want you to believe in me, says the Lord. And when you believe in me, all things are possible to him that believe. He said, I gave you the power to lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. I gave you the power to, to cast out demonic spirits. I gave you the power to realize that I am he, your God. I am God. And so when we really understand the power of the entity that we're working with and working for, we're going to set a goal and know that we're going to make it. Heaven and earth shall pass away before the word of God does. Heaven and earth shall pass away before the word of God does. So Psalms, 1, Psalms 112 and verse 5 tells us, A good man deals graciously and lend, and he will guide his affairs with discretion. A good man in chapter uh, Psalms 112 verse 5 says he will guide his affairs with discretion. That means that you're not throwing your money away. You're not squandering it. You're not throwing it to everybody that wants to take it from you. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says you will move, you will move, you will move with compassion and gracious and discretion. God will bless you. He will work it out. He will give you a heart desire. And I know that, that the Lord that we serve, he's going to give it to you just because he said he would. He's going to give it to me because I know he would. And we read here in, Pro, in Proverbs chapter 8, verses 18, he says, Riches and honors are with me, enduring riches and righteous. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold. So we know that when we find God, my goodness, we know that when we find him, when we begin to move in that direction, when we begin to thank God for what he's done, thank God for how he's going to bless us. You know, you may have a goal to say, Pastor, I can't do it now, but I'm going to work on it. I just want to do five push-ups. I just want to do five straight push-ups. I don't want nothing to be on the ground but my hands and my toes, Pastor. And I want to go down and I want to come all the way back up to extend my arm. And I want to do five push-ups. And you're going to get on that floor. And you might can't do but two that way and you might can't do can't do but one that way and then you got your hands on the floor and you got your knees on the floor and you got your toes on the floor tip of your toe and you're gonna push yourself up and you might not get but three that way but you keep on going you keep on moving why because your your arms are gonna get strengthened and your knees are gonna realize I don't need to support you no more let me straighten myself up and now you're actually exercising and you're pushing and you're pushing you got five of them and when you get to five you're gonna be so happy because you can say whoa I remember boy I can only do with two of these I can only do two but now I can do five now you're strengthened now you're encouraged the just shall live by faith and now before you know it you met that short term goal and now you're at the medium term goal you say you know what I'm gonna keep on going because if I can get five surely I can get seven 
I can get seven. And so you push, you push, you push, you work on it, and now you got seven. Oh, man, you have to. Why? Because you can do seven straight push-ups without being on your knees. And for some, that might not be nothing. But for some of us, that's a hurdle. That's a hill to climb. Seven straight push-ups without your arms buckling, whoa, that's a hill to climb. But I want you to know, you can climb that hill. You have what it takes to climb that hill. Yep, and then for, 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 for future, you're going to write down that goal. You're going to say, I'm going to do this. Every day, I'm going to get down and I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. And so you got down to about the 15th day, and then you didn't realize it. But that thing came good to you, and you was, and you was inspired that particular day, and you got enough rest that particular day. You felt good that particular day. Put your hands on the floor, your knees, and your knees say, no, not today. Let's do this thing right. And you got your palms on the ground, your toes on the ground. What you do? Bam, you hit one. Bam, you hit it two. What? You don't even feel it yet. Why? Because you were instructed by God to, to reach your goals. You've been strengthened. Remember how we said he low benefits daily. And remember we said we go from strength to strength. So as you begin to push, bam, the power of God see that you're trying to reach a goal. The power of God see you're trying to make this thing happen. God knows the plans that he has for you. And so as you begin to push, bam, here comes seven. And now you got seven. and But you stop because you said, I'm only going to do seven. But your hands is, your arms is straight and you just, you just right there. You're not moving. You're right there. But in essence, you can do a few more, but you say, no, I'm going to stop right here because you've outdone yourself. But two, three more days later, you get there, you say, you know what? I'm going to see if I can get to 10. Before you know it, bam, eight, bam, nine, what? 10. You got 10. Then you go to your knees, but you hit the floor. Boom. Thank you, Lord. I made it. I did it. So just 30 days ago, you could do zero. 30 days now, you pumping out 10. Guess what? You reach your goal. My brothers and my sisters, that's how easy it is. It's a struggle from the beginning. But the Bible says it will not lie. And at the end, it will, it will not lie, but it will speak. Great God Almighty. It said the vision is at a point in time. At the end, it will not lie. It will not lie. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. So now you got to understand Keep on pushing because now you're on to something. So you may do that in your business. You may do that same concept in your relationships. You may do that same concept on your job. That same concept. See, see, my brothers and my sisters, some things we got to work at. Some things we got to push towards. I don't know about you, but at last year, I used to say that everything I go to do, I have to fight my way through it. But now I say it's just a challenge. That I'm going to come through. Yeah, that's what I say this year. It's just a challenge, but I'm going to come through. Why? Because in my thought process now, the just shall live by faith. I got the faith enough to realize if I go to do it, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to meet obstacles. Things are going to come against me. They're going to try to make me stop doing what I'm going to do. But if I put my mind to it and continue to do it, I already know that if it comes into my vision, if it's in my imagination, God has already placed that thing in me to be successful. That's why he said in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5, casting down every thought, every imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against the word of God. So when I try to reach that goal and say, you don't have what it takes, you're a lie. You can't make it. You're a lie, Satan. You're not going to have the finance to do it. Satan, you're a lie. you got to begin to talk back to him and let him know no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. It never said a weapon was not going to be formed, but it just said it won't prosper. Why? Because God says, I am going to instruct you. And I'm going to help you get to that goal. And I'm going to watch you with my eyes, says the Lord. God is going to strengthen us. He is going to work it out. According to, you probably wasn't there. Those of you just coming, uh, Psalms 32, verse 8. God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And I will guide you with my eyes. Woo! He said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. So, you may think, that you should go down one direction, but God is going to prompt you to go down another direction 
so you can meet that goal. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. That's the type of God we serve. You can reach that goal. You can meet that goal. My brothers and sisters, you can handle this goal. God will instruct you. He will teach you in the way you should go. He said, I will guide you with my eyes. So that means if God is guiding us with his eyes, that means he's already seen the future. He already seen the path that we're trying to take. And he's going to guide us. He's going to instruct us and say, hey, woo, don't you go that way today because something is going to happen that you don't even want to deal with. Don't you go that way today because some people is going to be there that you don't even need to be around. Woo, don't you go over there today because there's a situation that I just don't want you involved in. So don't worry about it. God says, I am going to bless you. I am going to work it out. I am going to give you your heart desire. But all I need for you to do is just trust in me. Trust in me. Trust in me. Trust in me. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. Let God direct your path. My brothers and my sisters, he wants to direct your path. He wants you to meet that goal. Because when you meet that goal, wow, he says residual income. Residual prosperity is in you meeting that goal. It's in you meeting that goal, my brothers. It's in you meeting that goal, my sisters. Prosperity is in you to meet that goal. And when you meet that goal, it's going to make you so happy because last year you couldn't have done it. But this is a new year. And in this particular year, the Lord says this is going to be restored power, that God is going to restore and regenerate a power in us. So in this year, as you begin to say, I want to, I want to reach this goal, God is going to restore a power in you that you can reach this goal. You can make it happen. You can do what God has purposed you to do. Oh, yes, he would have never brought it to your mind. He would have never put it in your imagination. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. It's just like me. God would never put in my imagination to go to New York and climb on the outside of the Empire State Building and get up there and raise my hand. God ain't going to put that in me because he already know what I am, who I am, and what I would feel about climbing up that building. Now, he may say, go do something similar, lowercase, and be okay with it. Okay, it's a different goal. But all right, God, I think I can do it. I think I can do it. Because when God places something in you, he has already given you what you need to accomplish it. But you just have to grasp. You have to grasp. So you say, okay, God, I can't climb the, the, the uh, Empire State Building. But you say, save $20 a week without going over there and buying this stuff that I don't need. Save $20 a week. I save thirty dollars a week. Save fifty dollars out of each paycheck, so that I don't need to have to worry about you know three four months later. I got this type of money set up. Okay, Lord, I can do that. It's a little hard, Lord. You know, there's some habits I got to break because you know I love uh, purchasing this and I love getting that. But some of us, He said, no, you know, just wait a while. Hold on to that twenty dollars this time. Don't do it. And when you begin to hold on to that twenty. That 20 is going to accumulate to a second 20, and that second 20 is going to accumulate through a third 20, and before you know it, you go into your little stash, you got $60. Oh, man, you didn't know, you you, you you didn't even think about it no more, you just stashed your money. And then before you realize it, man, you got $100, $100 to your good. Bills taken care of, you got $100 to your good. Now God wants you to realize if you can save 100 you can save 200 if you can say 200, you can say 300. Why? Because it's the same concept. So that's why God is pushing me and you today. He's pushing us through this season to begin to set short-term goals, medium-term goals, and long-term goals so that we can learn not only to just invest our money, but how to properly invest our time. Oh, say it again, Pastor. We can... Learn how to invest our monies, but best of all, how to properly invest our time. You know, sometimes all you really need is enough time to get it right. All you really need is enough time put towards something. It would be a different turnout. So now your goal 
for this next 10 days is I'm going to take the time to focus on my time. I'm going to take the time to focus on my time. In other words, I'm not going to waste time. I'm not going to waste time. Time now for the next 10 days is going to be orchestrated. It's going to be focused upon time now for the next 10 days. I'm even going to be so meticulous in it, I'm going to jot down what I need to do. My brothers and my sisters, you would be amazed if you were to, for 24 hours, for 24 hours, you'd go back and you write down everything you did on each hour. And on the next day, you look at what you've done. You would be amazed how much time you put to nothing. You would be amazed how much time you dedicated to wasting your time. So your goal could be for the next 10 days, I'm going to focus on doing things right, doing things different. And I'm going to look at my time and I'm going to focus on my time. In fact, I'm going to write my time down. And I'm going to write down a timeline. And then when you look at that thing next week, you say, man, I could have did this on Tuesday. What you trying to do on Thursday? That's why the Lord says, don't put out to tomorrow what you can do today. Go ahead and do it today. You can do it. But see, fatigue, procrastination, and not really focused on time. Not focused on time. Mm. When we begin to focus on time, my brothers and sisters, it will put your mind in a different perspective. You begin to focus on time, you're trying to put as much in time that you could possibly put in time because that time will make you understand two things. I'm better than who I used to be and I'm stronger than who I'm projecting. I'm better than who I used to be and I'm stronger to who I'm projecting. So as you begin to look at time, you've got to realize there's two things I got to get out of this. I got to get out that I'm better than who I am and I'm stronger than what I've been doing. Stronger in the Bible because you're going to begin to read more. You're going to have time to read more. Stronger in your prayer life because you're going to begin to rec recognize God more. You're going to begin to receive goals that you made, that you've reached, that you touched. You're going to begin to know that the God you serve, he says now that we should go from strength to strength to strength. And so as you begin to focus on time, you're going to realize there's a strength in time that I missed a week ago that I should have been strong at. But you wasn't strong because you were so fatigued and you was just so tired and you could have did a better thing at that particular situation you were dealing with, but you didn't have time. You was rushing and you was trying to make this happen, trying to make that happen. No, stop, slow down, woo! Time. No longer allow time. Hear me now, hear me now, hear me now. No longer allow time to manipulate you, but you manipulate time. I'm going to sit back on that one. No longer allow time to manipulate you because time continues to go. It's going to continue to go. Time never stops. So you've been manipulated because you are not allowing yourself to go towards the flow of time. When you go towards the flow of time, you're going to be able to do the things in time and certainly be on time. Oh, I said something right there. Oh, I said something right there. Certainly be on time. So when you begin to be on time for time, God is going to strengthen you. He's going to give you more than you've ever had. Why? Because you're on time. You're on time for prayer. You're on time for reading the Bible. You're on time for just thanking God throughout the day. You're not fatigued. You're not stressed. You're not discombobulated. You're not rushing, trying to go this, rushing, trying to do that. In fact, my brothers and my sisters, you can sit on the park bench and rest a minute. Whew. Exhale. Flow with time. Write it down. Make it plain. So that's why he said, write the vision, make it plain. It said that you may run with it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. So now that appointed time is right now. 
If God placed it in your memory right now, he placed it in your vision right now. He's placed it in your imagination right now. So right now is that appointed time. God knows the plans that he has for you. He knows the future. He says sometimes, my brothers and my sisters, with this goal, hear me now, with this goal he's placed in you, sometimes it takes a pressing. Sometimes it takes a pressing. It's not going to be a flower bed of ease to make this goal. The reason why it's not going to be a flower bed of ease to make this go, because we have an adversary who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. This adversary does not want you to meet that goal. God says, I know the plans that I help you, but Satan says, I know how to stop that plan if you allow me to pull you out of time. <laughs> if you allow me to pull you out of the steps of time, I will pull you out of that step of time. You will not keep up with time. Now you're tired. Now you're frustrated. Lord, we ain't going to bless me. Now you're starting to doubt God. Why? Because you're not strengthening your mind. You're not strengthening your heart. Your body is fatigued. Our bodies is not made for stress. So Satan knows if I put stress on you, and I can put stress on you through you in time. I can put stress on you in time. I can bring this stress. I can put that stress. I can put that stress before you know it. You don't have time to do nothing. You don't have time to do anything. Let alone it feel like doing anything. Because stress. Now you're looking at oppression and depression and, and thoughts that are just not of God. And, and, you're, and you're mad about this. And before you know it, you're right back to that pleasure that you said you was going to quit. Because that's going to be your go-to to get your mind thinking, this is all I got left. But the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You're going to begin now this month. You're going to begin now this week. You're going to begin now tomorrow to start looking at your time. How you handle your time. You're going to wake up in time. If God puts you on the wake up list in the morning, you're going to wake up. You're, you're up now. You give God the praise. Now you're starting time right. You're giving God the anointing of what he has flowing inside of you. You bring it up. And then my brothers and my sisters, hear me now. If God has given you the gift of speaking in tongues, you begin to pray in the spirit. Praise the Lord. You begin to pray in the spirit. Because when you begin to pray in the spirit, God is downloading some stuff into you. Praise the Lord. He's downloading because you're talking to God. So pray in the spirit. When you get up in the morning, you walk through your bedroom, through your house, wherever. You're praying in the spirit. You're giving God to pray. Now you're starting to look at your time. Because God is going to bless you, my brothers. So he sent me here tonight to tell you, I have confidence in reaching my goal. I have confidence in reaching my goal. My brothers and sisters, do you have confidence in reaching your goal? Well, you didn't a year ago, and you didn't two years ago. But this year, the Bible says, this year you shall prosper. John 15 and verse 7 says, if you abide in me and my word remain in you, I'll give you your heart desire. Whatever it is that you desire, stand on it. Watch this. And I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Stand on it. He said in Isaiah, oh, I love this. I love this scripture. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10 tells us, Fear not, for I am with you. And be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uplift you with my righteous right hand. As you go towards that goal, he said, I'm with you. He said, I'm going to strengthen you. He said, I'm going to help you. He said, I'm going to uplift you with my righteous right hand. My God. So watch this, thanks. Let's put this thing together. So if God says, I'm going to uplift you with my righteous right hand, uh, uh, in Isaiah 41 and 10, he said, I'm going to uplift you with my righteous right hand. And then over here in Psalms 32, verses 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. So God is not only guiding us with his eyes, but he's using his hand to push you. He's using his hand to uplift you. He's using his hands, my brothers and sisters, to guide you. So the Holy Spirit is going to be there to lead and guide you in the direction that you shall go. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm looking at the clock. I got to go. I got to go. be obedient to the word. Listen, listen, listen. Don't go yet. I got I got I got some more thing I want to tell you. But listen, if you want to uh, sow a seed into the ministry, this is a fruitful ministry. 
Go to 77977 uh, and text EHGIVE. And when you do that, a link will come up. And in that link, it will give you whatever options you desire. You say, well, Pastor, I heard you. Uh, but give me an easier. So go to Cash App 3177 and lowercase j. And then, you know, put a sentence with it, how you want to flow. And then it will get to where you're trying to send it. We have, a, we have a lot of people moving towards that cash app. But, you know, however you want to flow, however you want to flow, just know that the Lord is going to bless you mightily for doing just that. All right. So now, back to what we're talking about. The Lord says, I'm going to uplift you with my righteous right hand. So there's a righteous right hand that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he wants to pick us up. He wants to strengthen us. And he wants to make us understand if you, can, if you set out to do it, you can do it. Galatians 6 and verse 9 says, Do not grow weary in well-doing. For a due season, you're going to reap the harvest if you're frank not. My brothers and my sisters, don't you quit now. It's been placed in your spirit. Go get it. It's been placed in your heart. You can do it. You can put your hands to it. You can put your hands to it. How do you put your hands to it? Because the blocker says, write down the vision, make it plain. So put your hands to it, write the vision down. Put your heart to it, knowing that God is going to help you. Knowing that God is going to strengthen you. Knowing that God is going to work it out for you. Put your eyes to it through marketing, through technology, and allow God to bless you that way. And then here, put your faith to it. And Mark 9, 23, and Jesus said it to him, if you can just believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Do you believe, my brother? Remember now, we said in Habakkuk, the just shall live by faith. Are you one of the just? I think you are. I think you are. I think you are. The just shall live by faith. I think you are. You don't have to prove to me, but prove it to you that you will live by faith. Clench that hand together. Get that face balled up. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned. You know why I said ball that hand up? Because God said, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, that whatever's in my hand, no man can pluck it out. He said, and when I work, it shall not be reversed. So we're in the palm of the hands of God. What you're doing shall not be reversed. God is going to bless you. He is going to work it out. He is going to give you a heart desire. I don't want you to quit this year. I want you to do it. You can do it. You can do it. Ten push-ups at the tenth day. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it, my brothers. You can do it, my sisters. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. God is going to bless you to do it. You can do it. You can make it this time. No excuses. You can make it this time. No, I'm just, no backing up. No, you can do it this time. If God has placed it in your beings, you can do it. You can make it work. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Come on, my brothers and my sisters. I want to hear some testimonies. I want to hear some testimonies. Say, Pastor, I did it. I made it go. And I'm going, to, I'm going to rejoice with you. I'm going to rejoice with you because I know you're powerful enough to do what God has purposed in your life to do. That's why he said in Jeremiah 29, 11, you can do it. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I have to be obedient to time, my brothers and my sisters. So I have to close here. But if there's additional that you want to hear, you just text Pastor. He'll get it there for you. He'll make sure you're straight. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are, for what you've done. God, thank you for your word tonight that we're going to have confidence in reaching our goals. We give you praise, honor, and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. God, everyone that's listening, strengthen them, God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Wherever they are right now, God, I give you the praise for their success. Their success, Lord God, their success will be just that. God, you said this is a year of restored power, restored power in them, God. And because of that, God, restore the power. Whatever Satan tried to take from them, God, restore it right now. You said in Isaiah uh, 61 and verse 7, for the shame, they shall receive a double portion. So right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, they're going to receive a double portion for all the things that have been taken from them. This do now, Father, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace, my brothers and my sisters, and thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Amen, amen, amen.